Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming. My name is Vincent. I'm going to talk about standardized subgraphs today, or how we can make it so much easier for you to build your dApps. If you ever built a dApp, or have ever considered building a dApp, one of the first questions that comes to mind is probably, where do you find the data? And let me show you a, an example that Component Finance has been working on. So uh, they are trying to build this uh, predictive mo model uh, to, for people to look at uh, different assets, like ETH in this case, and how uh, the yield will be in the future. And in order to do that, they need a lot of historical data, historical data on interest rate, on total deposit, from different lending protocols across different networks. And uh, this is a, a small example to illustrate where you might go to find all these data today. As you can see, there are many different data sources that you need to hit to, depending on which lending protocol you, you want to pull data from. If you're lucky, there's a subgraph that you can already use that has all that data. If not, you might have to like, work with uh, JSON RPC API and kind of uh, transform and aggregate all of that data yourself. And for each of that data, you probably ne also need a data adapter to um, normalize so that your application can use it. So the point I wanted to make here is that Web3 data space is very fragmented. Uh, there are dozens and dozens of different data sources that focus on different parts uh, of data or different kind of data. If you're working with raw data, uh, it takes a lot of effort to aggregate, transform them into something that you can use. For example, TVL, revenue, those uh, all require a lot of work. Uh, historical data is often difficult to find. Um, you probably need an archive node, and those are often difficult to access. Uh, this is actually a problem that Mazari has run into when we first got into the on-chain space. We're a big data provider. We're trying to get a lot of data, and it was difficult for us to find those. So we decided to collaborate with the graph to work on uh, standardizing subgraphs so that we solve this problem for everyone in the space. Okay. Uh, specifically, the way that we, uh, we standardize these subgraphs is that we would look at all of the protocols in a specific category, say lending protocols, and we pick out all of the commonalities and differences among these protocols and see and come up with a unified data model that would apply to all of these. And then we transform that into a common uh, subgraph schema in which we build all of our subgraphs against. So for each of the lending protocols we integrate, we use that standardized schema so that uh, you can use the same query, you can use the same data adapter to uh, fetch all of that data. And now, instead of going to all of these different data sources to fetch that, that data, you just need to uh, hit one single decentralized data source that's the graph, and you'll be able to find all of the data you need, including the historical ones. So uh, here's an example uh, product, or well, here's actually a product that Mazari has built on top of all of the uh, standardized subgraph that we have built. Um, as you can see here, uh, we're showing, there's a lot more metrics that we're showing uh, that we, are, we have integrated. It's, it's not in this, uh, in this slide, but you can um, check it out using the URL there. So to give you a sense of where we are today uh, on, on the subgraph standardization work, we have indexed data from 60 different protocols across 20 different networks, surfacing over 500 unique metrics across all of the different protocol types. And we have indexed over a billion data points that you can use in your DAP directly so that you don't have to do that work. And the way that we are seeing kind of how the future will evolve is that today you're spending a lot of effort on kind of the data plumbing, on the data aggregation part, and very little uh, on the application logic. Uh, but with the subgraphs that we have built, um, you know, it's already done for you. You can just use that. Uh, so you can focus more on your application logic as a DAP de developer. Um, 
Yeah, so all of the work we do is uh, open source, it's public. Uh, here's the GitHub repo for all of our standardized subgraphs. If you're a DAP builder or a data scientist, uh, data analyst, we, if you work with a protocol team, uh, we're, our, uh, we're more than happy to integrate your protocol uh, into our standard, uh, so w uh, feel free to reach out to me after the talk. And if you're a subgraph developer or a Rust developer that's uh, that interested in, in this data space, uh, feel free to scan that QR code there. Uh, that will take you to our careers page, and uh, we are always hiring. Yeah, this is my talk, and thank you for coming. Yeah. Is aggregated subgraph is more is there assumptions of trust when we use uh, aggregated subgraph compared to this other subgraph or compound subgraph? Yeah, so uh, all of our subgraph source code is uh, open source. Uh, there was, you know, the, the GitHub repo we showed. So we, we uh, describe all of the methodology of our kind of, you know, the computation of our uh, metrics in detail in the repo, and of course you can go into the the source code to look at exactly how different numbers are integrated. And the graph is also working on uh, something called verifiable queries that will put that trust into the data that it indexes. What's and the uh, approximate delay before the data is available? I mean, if we want to do something uh, in real time, it's in real time. Yeah, so it's block by block. Okay, but. On the order of be some like 15 seconds to like two minutes, okay. depending on the chain. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah.